Well, welcome back for vlog number two. This will be a quick one because uh, I'm headed to Georgia tomorrow to see my sister um, who lives in Columbus and fortunately for us we will also be down there during the SEC championship so we're going to go check that out as well. Um, and in the time I just was supposed to be uh, spending packing, I spent watching Butler uh, take down Cincinnati in a pretty awesome uh, ending of a game. Um, so quickly just want to revisit a model that we learned in our master's program, a uh, health economics model, um, as it relates to the entities involved in providing care to a patient, or not just provide, not really providing care, but the entire health system essentially, um, and looking at it with regard to two aspects, and that's one, um, the entity that pays is responsible for payment, and the other one um, being the entities that are responsible for the decision making um, in terms of uh, treatment, um, you know, the brand, uh, you know, the equipment, um, basically the, it's the side that pays versus the side that holds the, uh, makes the uh, cost and expense decision. And then in the old model, uh, the insurance company and the payer, or the, and, the, and the individual, the patient, they're the ones responsible for payment. Um, and the hospitals, the pharmaceutical companies, the medical uh, equipment companies, and the physicians, they're the ones that are doing the decision making. So you kind of have this divide between payer and the one making the decisions that lead to um, very high costs and have led to very high costs in the past. Um, so we're kind of come to a point years ago, but uh, it's changing pretty rapidly where the insurance company and, and the payer, uh, both payers, the patient and the insurance company, both payers are kind of um, at a tipping point in terms of you know they're they're tired of just getting these high costs and being responsible for these high costs without really much input. So now you're starting to see more of a shift um, of risk towards the hospital uh, via the insurance company, and it, it still ultimately will fall on the patient um, to pay for their end of it. But you're seeing the insurance company start to put some of that risk back on, back on the hospital um, to control those costs and increase uh, quality and outcomes. <laughs> So it was just kind of interesting. Uh, it, it was more talking about um, health plans, uh, provider health organization, provider health plans, um, and the fact that you know it's essentially cutting out the middleman for them, where they are taking their, they're taking on all the risk and essentially becoming the insurance company for whatever population of patient that they're working with, whether they just be their employees or um, actually taking on the general population um, into their health plans, but. Um, you know, in organizations that have a large enough base, they can do this, and it's a way for them to, um, they're still stuck, they're still absorbing all of the risk, uh, more so even with if the insurance company was um, handling those patients, but um, kind of marginally in with the insurance company moving towards it, put, placing even more risk on the, on the hospital. So they're essentially saying, we're going to take all the risk, but now we've got a greater control of these patients and their outcomes and feel like we have um, more of an opportunity to affect them in a positive way. So that was just one way. Uh, you know, I was just in a meeting thinking about it and that model kind of just popped in my head. It's like, yeah, uh, so I wanted to revisit and look at it and see, um, you know, how relevant it still is, which it is in many ways um, with regard to the physician in the uh, pharmaceutical companies, um, in the hospitals, they do t dictate a lot of the costs still. You know, when, um, you know, the x-ray machines and the CAT scanners and um, all that expensive equipment that the hospital buys, they're not necessarily, you know, asking the patient, hey, would you rather have the highest quality or the cheapest cost or some mix in between? You know, they're doing what they think is best, which most of the time is the highest quality one that wins out. Um, pharmaceutical companies, most of them are for profit, so they're in the business to make money, <clears throat> so they're not necessarily as concerned with uh, keeping costs low for patients. So you've got all these external pressures that um, that that impact uh, the final bill that the hospital, uh, or the final charge that the hospital um, provides in the final bill that the insurance company and the patient ultimately have to pay, um, which is one thing I think in the past that hasn't always been realized was that, um, you know, you get a bill from a hospital, like, man, you know, the hospital gets the that blame, 
because they're the one that <clears throat> are handing you that bill um, for that service. But um, there's a lot of uh, kind of intermediaries that affect them, that affect those costs, and ultimately lead to that overhead. So just the thought of the day. Thanks. Let me know what you think. Bye. Go dogs.